I want to be a champion skater and a writer. I want my picture in all the magazines. Maybe I'll be a movie star. I want to be different from all the other girls. I want to be a modern woman. I want to travel. I want to study languages. Languages and history. I want to do everything. I want to... Grandmother's coming to visit. I'm simply too busy. Why don't you ask Hannah? I'll be a chill. So religious. <laughs> Quickly. Hi. Quickly. I'm sure your husband loves the way your strawberry jam is. Hello, Mr. Clement. Hello, Anne. Me, where's father? Wait a minute. He's in the storeroom with Mr. Kugler and Mr. Van Pels. Thank you, me. May I say how nice you look today? The problem is you're using too much sugar. Too much nutmeg? Not enough coriander? I, uh, uh, black pepper with, uh, is that ginger? No. Close. Pim. Your mother telephoned. She was quite worried. You should have gone straight home. What are you doing? Mr. Kugler is trying out some new recipes. Your mixing still needs work, but you may have something. That's high praise indeed, Mr. Kugler. As you know, Mr. Van Pels has an infallible nose. Anne, a joke for you. What is black and white and red all over? What? A newspaper. <laughs> you know, red. <laughs> it was a lovely book. Thank you, Grandma. Is it exciting coming back away from Germany by yourself? Tell me everything. You see, she's still as curious as ever. Let me see your book. Let me see. Wait, Grandma has another surprise. And here's your present, Anne. Mm. A fountain pen. Look, Margot. It's beautiful. I treasure it always. Thank you, Grandma. I'm so glad you came to visit. Grandma will be living with us from now on. Girls, would you like that? Oh, yes. Very much. Anne, why don't you try out your new fountain pen? Yes, no, immediately. Excuse me. Don't be too long. The Goslers are expecting us. Make sure she gets ready. Let her have her fun, Edith. You spoil her terribly, Otto. She should have come straight home. Oh, I'm starving. And please mind your manners, Anne. I know, like Margot. I thought you liked the Goslers. Of course I do. I just wish Hanali's family wasn't so religious. I'd rather be at the movies. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kideshanu bemitzvotav veratzah vanu veshabat kodesho beahava uberatzon inchilarnu zikaron lemaase bereshit ki hu yom techila lemikrai kodesh ki vanu bachakta veotanu kidashta mikol haamim veshabat kodeshcha beahava uberatzon inchaltanu baruch ata Adonai mekadesh haShabbat. Amen.
Hitler's only a fever, Hans. Germany will recover, mark my words. What's to keep that madman from annexing Holland and liberating his Germanic brothers? The Dutch are different. <laughs> Sometimes, Otto, I think, you have too much faith in people. Poor mother, she's used to better. God willing, Edith, one day we'll all go home. Till then, we get by. Be thankful you've got central heating. Can you have you with us, Mrs. Gosler? Oh, that's very kind of you. Such a sweet girl. You're lucky. Hannah's got two left hands. Sometimes I miss a full-time servant, but... We don't have money to pay servants. Ah, the Dutch ones are hopeless anyway. Simply cannot be relied on. Mother! Anne says you shouldn't call them servants. Say maid. God knows everything, but Anne knows everything better. <laughs> you like to spoil yourself. You like it even better when other people spoil you. Does that make me a bad person? Good people and bad people have one thing in common. They both make mistakes. Only... Good people can admit their mistakes and learn from them. Tell me about the Paulas. That's a story for children, not a little woman like you. No. I want to hear it. The Paulas live here with us. You can't see them. But sometimes, if you keep absolutely still and really listen, you can tell where they're hiding. But beware, but beware, because you never know which Paula you might find. Good Paula, or bad Paula who's always causing trouble. I don't mean to be bad, Paula. But sometimes, sometimes she just escapes. Doesn't matter. As long as you always keep good Paula in your heart. Daddy, couldn't they be the same person? Good Paula and bad Paula. Why? Yes. I suppose that's possible. Maybe good Paula's afraid of what people may think of her. And that's why she's bad sometimes. At least that's what I think. And you always told me I should think for myself. Papers say Hitler has his eye on Poland now. Holland will stay neutral, whatever happens. Still, all this Nazi talk, bad for business. I have fewer patients now, but no matter. There will always be Jewish cavities to be filled. <laughs> say, ah. Ah. Ah, 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 ah. ah. Mr. Pfeffer, not until we're married. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. And do as your mother says. <laughs> you know it's not good for you to go swimming. Here, dry yourself off. You never let me have any fun. I don't want you getting sick. You know how frail you are. Were we ever like that, Edith? No, Otto. We were never like that. Mm. <laughs>
told me he'd never come to Holland. <laughs> Happy birthday, Anne. <laughs> we must have a picture. A picture. Yes, darling, a picture. picture. Adolf is your birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> the girls and Uncle Adolf. <laughs> Hannah, point at your dad. Everyone point at Uncle Adolf. Very good. Germany invades Poland and the free state of Danzig, ending the efforts and hopes of diplomats for peaceful settlement. The roar of gunfire replaces the talk of statesmen, and the curtain of war falls over Europe. Warsaw is bombed, blasted and shelled. Poland is in ruin. Great Britain and France respond with a declaration of war on Germany. Huge French guns move to the front and the to the great man-made Maginot Line, the nation's first bulwark of defense. Wasn't your monsieur a beaut? Much too pretty to lose her head. I didn't like the king very much, though. Tyrone Powell was much more handsome. Just like the boy I'm going to marry. You've already chosen. Oh, no. Too many admirers. Just like poor Marie Antoinette. The war won't come here, will it, Daddy? No. I don't think I'd like that very much. Oh, no, um, the British will see to her, Hitler. Violating repeated proclamation of Holland's neutrality in the current conflict, German troops are said to be massing on the Dutch. I ask you, Mr. Gies, what good is the Dutch army in the face of a blitzkrieg? They'll be riding to the front on bicycles. <laughs> I wish I could disagree with you, but I'm afraid I can't. Curly, all this talk of an invasion is nonsense. Why haven't they? What's stopping them? Mind you stay out of it. I'll do the thinking, if you please. <laughs> Mr. Frank listens to his wife. You see what he's like, knows all the answers. Beware of marriage, Mr. Gies. In my experience, its merits are greatly overrated. Here, here. My sister begs me to send the children to London to live with her. And will you? How can I keep them safe there? Well, it's better if we stay together. Hope for the best. Ah, here's a joke for you. I heard it.
Five days was all it took. Now people are throwing themselves out of windows. Where does panic get us, Hans? We learn to adapt. We adapted in Germany. I wanted my baby to be born in a different world. Not like the one we left. It's Frankfurt all over again. No. I mustn't let myself think that. Not now. A friend who was saw it yesterday. Marie Frank. I'm still not used to having a sister. But she keeps me busy all the time. You mustn't spoil her, Hannah. No one likes a spoiled child. I'm not sure if I care for your outfit, Lucy. If you don't mind me saying so. Mother makes me wear it. She said we should show some allegiance. Whatever that means. Papa's been out of work for so long. Mother said Hitler would make jobs here the same way he did in Germany. Lucy! What are you doing? Get away from those girls! Not to worry, Mr. Kleinman. We'll beat the Nazis at their own game. Paperwork. Because Pectacon is registered as a Jewish business, it's necessary to create an entirely new company, and with your permission, Jan, I'd like to call it Geese and Company. Whatever I can do to help. But you must be careful, Mr. Frank. The bureaucrats are silent collaborators. You'll be listed as supervisory director with no responsibilities. Mr. Kugler will take over day-to-day -day operations along with Mr. Kleinman. It'll be a purely Aryan enterprise, all strictly legal. On paper, I won't exist. <laughs> Is there something wrong with us, the Jews? No, no, you must never think that. You must have done something awful. Oh. I was a little girl like you in Vienna when the war came, and there wasn't enough food to eat. One day, my mother bundled me up, and she took me to the train station. She put me on a train to Holland, she hung a sign around my neck, and she said goodbye. Did she love you anymore? Yes, she did. That's why she did it. There was food here and families willing to share it. I didn't know that at the time. I felt so sick and so alone. But when I got a little older, I realized good people sometimes find themselves in trouble without having done anything wrong. Do you think I'm a good person? Yes, I do. When times are better. This one's yours. Prove that someone's finally going to make an honest Dutch woman out of you. I'm already honest. Miss Sandrushitz, you were doing Oh, 
I do. I do. <laughs> I now pronounce you Van and Wine. <laughs> Divinely me. Oh, thank you, Anne. You too, Yan. If she leads, I just follow. May I see your ring again, please, mm -hmm. me? I want one just like it when I get married. And a husband like Yan, too. You'll find him. I did. Oh, yeah. oh please, Curly, just one more time. Oh, sit down, please, Putty. You only make a fool of yourself. Surely you wouldn't refuse a lady's invitation, Mr. Frank. Well, I'm afraid that at the moment you have a rival, Mrs. Van Vos. Thumbs up. Charmed, sir. discovered the basic laws of geometry was Pythagoras. Write it down, please. B Y T H A G O R A S. <coughs> yes? I'm afraid that however interesting your lesson might be, I can't see it. Ah. Well, um, uh, you, will you change places with Miss, um... Frank. Frank. Change, please. The square on the hypotenuse... I like your eyes, Jackie. Now, the first thing I noticed about you, people say my hair is my most attractive feature. Do you think they're right? Yes, of course. You know, we live on Mobeda Plain. It's not far away. You can come to my house if you want. We can do our homework together. I like that very much. So would I. We're going to be famous friends, I can tell. At the Montessori school, I was very popular. I cried when Mrs. Cooper has told us we couldn't go there anymore. At my school, there were these awful boys. They started calling us two girls. We were so scared we ran away. I don't know. Maybe it's better this way. Think about it. If it hadn't been for the Germans, we never would have met. This is Moji. She's going to have kittens soon. And because she keeps meeting lots of men. Um. Mommy, would it be all right if Shaki stayed over one night? She wants to. Wait, I have a better idea. I'll come over to your house. We can talk about things they don't want us to. <laughs>
want to see something really magical. Mother designed that. The best people used to wear dresses. She stopped making them when the war started. She thinks they're out of place. After the war, I'm only going to wear the finest of clothes. Miss Anne Frank was radiant at the Princess Ball last night, wearing a beautiful gown of gold lace. You de Hall. You've read it three times. I love City Van Mark's Mount. She's my favorite writer. Didn't you love the part when Leo proposes to Yoop? Yeah. I'll be Yoop and you be Leo. Hold my hand. Yoop, you're crying. Let go of my hand, Leo. What if I told you that you were my one true darling? Oh, Leo, kiss me, Yoop. Jackie, if I tell you a secret, will you promise not to tell anyone? I promise. I've never been kissed by a boy before. Have you? What was it like, kissing? It was... <sighs> You'll find out. I want to be a real woman with a woman's body. I'd love to know what one feels like. May I? No. But we're best friends, aren't we? Of course we are. We'll always be best friends. If one of us ever has to go away, let's promise to exchange letters. Promised. Right. <laughs> we measure the circumference of a circle with the formula 2 pi r. Write it down, please. <laughs> Quite the chatterbox, aren't you, Miss Frank? Or perhaps you'd like to share your wisdom with us? A little essay, perhaps, entitled uh, Quack, 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 went Mrs. Quackenbush. <laughs> Say, 500 words. Due tomorrow. Blackout drapes make everything so stuffy. I feel as if I'm suffocating sometimes. It's all in your head. You know that isn't true. I'm a very delicate creature, Mr. Frank. Very delicate. I tell you, the Germans will lose this war. And I keep asking you when. We must be thankful for what blessings we have. Blessings, Otto, really. Our families are still together. That's enough. Attention, everyone. <clears throat> quack, 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 said Mrs. Quackenbush. A story by Anne Frank. Go ahead, Anne. We're all listening. Once upon a time, there was a mother duck and three beautiful ducklings who lived in a lake ruled by a proud swan. Quack, 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 said Mrs. Quackenbush to her brood. Quack, quack, quack said the ducklings. Keep your voices down, roared the swan, his feathers all in a ruffle. Be quiet, or I'll bite you, and then you'll never quack again. This one was not a nice one. He was, he was a, a black, black swan. swan, and all the other ducks in the lake were afraid of him. But not Mrs. Quackenbush. You won't bite these children, she said to the swan, who answered, I'll do exactly what I please. They're only ugly little ducklings, and I am their master. And then he began to bite the ducklings. Save us, Mama! The poor little ducklings cried. And then Mrs. Quackenbush began to quack. She quacked, and she quacked, and she quacked. Stop it! Stop that infernal quacking, cried the swan, putting his wings over his ears. But Mrs. Quackenbush did not stop. Not until the black swan flew away, never to return. She gathered her ducklings around her, and together they swam off happily ever after, singing. Quack, quack, quack. 
friend up here. I've been thinking it might be a good idea to take over the building behind us. I'll show you what I have in mind. Um, it's two rooms and the bathroom below, an attic upstairs. It's a perfect laboratory space, wouldn't you say? A place for Mr. Van Pels and me to cook up our little experiments. <laughs> what do you say? Yep. Yeah. Why not? Business is good. The war. We can afford to expand. Yep. Next. The Germans are feeling especially generous today. Four stars for a single textile coupon. Must we be branded now, too? So it appears, and we must pay for the privilege. Aren't you going to miss school now it's almost over? I am. Especially history. I love history. Such a long walk to the Lyceum. I miss having a bike. <laughs> Personally, I'm glad mine was stolen. At least the Germans wouldn't get it. It can be so childish sometimes. Look, isn't it darling? I asked Daddy to buy it for me for my 13th birthday. It's going to be the best ever, the most smashing. You and Frank, um, you go to school with my cousin Vilma. I'm Hello. Hello, Zilberberg. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> this is my best friend, Jackie. How do you do? Perhaps uh, you'd allow me to buy you uh, hot chocolate? I love chocolate. Chocolate? Is your name really Hello? Helmut. But my grandfather doesn't like it, so he calls me Hello instead. But don't your parents think it's funny? I don't know. I haven't seen them in four years. You came all by yourself? It must have been so... so dangerous. I've never had an adventure like that before. I suppose Oma did. She never talked about it much. She died last winter. She had cancer. Oh, um... I'm sorry. I never got to tell her how much I loved her. I'd like very much to see you again, if that will be all right. You don't have a girlfriend, do you? Well, um, there's Ursula, of course. She's very pretty. No, oh, really. But not as interesting as you are. We can meet on Wednesday evenings. My grandparents think I go to wood carving lessons, but actually I go to Zionist meetings. I'm not a fanatic or anything. You know, mostly everyone just yells. I'd much rather be with you. Well, here I am. I can call for you then? That would be nice. Until Wednesday then. Bye. Bye.
Sit down. You've no doubt read how the Germans have emptied the provinces of Jews and sent them all here to Amsterdam. Our own Jewish council urges cooperation. <laughs> There's talk of mass deportations, labor camps. Do you remember those poor boys they rounded up last February? They were sent to labor camps, not one came back. Meep, I have a great secret to confide in you. Edith, the children and I are going into hiding. Mr. Van Pulse and his family will join us. We're not going to wait for the Nazis to drag us away. We'll simply disappear. Where will you go? Here. I don't understand. In the annex at the back of this building. We make the move on the 16th of July. That's less than a month away. Kleiman and Kugler have been helping to move in certain belongings and supplies, a little at a time. We'll need someone to rely on for necessities, to act as caretaker. You know how much I trust you here in the office, but what I'm asking, well, what I'm asking of you now is... Yes, I'll do it, of course. Think me. It'll be a great burden, not without risk. The penalties are bound to be severe. I said yes. I meant it. Thank you, Meep. Anne and Marco, do they know? No, not yet. Let them enjoy their lives for a little while longer. Wouldn't you say? The soles are almost like real leather. You're so lucky. Peter Van Pels. He's always hammering something out in the garden behind us. He's a dope. Mummy says I have to be nice to him because his father works with Pim. I think he's cute. Cute? Peter, would you like a biscuit? Um. And bake them herself. Great. I'd love one. Thank you. Come in. Thank you. I'll get her. Good afternoon, everyone. Take your seat. Everyone. The show is about to begin. Oh, um, uh, those are for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> I'm not in love with anybody. We're just friends.
grandparents don't approve of my seeing you. They say you're not old enough. Well, you shouldn't do anything your grandparents don't approve of. Love always finds a way. I'll see you later, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Margot, what do you think of Hello? He, he's very nice and decent. It's easy to see he's in love with you. Yes, it's rather fun. How old were you when you got your period? Anne, little girls shouldn't talk of such things. I'm tired of being a little girl. I want to be a woman. Well, it's different for every girl. Woman. Your turn will come. You just have to be patient. For how long? Frank? Yes? Sign here. Father's gotten a summons. Don't worry, he's made plans. I'll get back as quickly as I can. Anne has to be told. Break it to her as gently as you can. And remember, keep absolutely still. There to think no one's home. I understand. They would come for Otto or me, not for the children. Where's Otto? Visiting some friends at the Jewish hospital. Plan for the 16th, but this changes everything. Otto will know what to do. What's happened? Anne, listen to me. I want you and Margot to flag a rock side. There won't be any time tomorrow. Daddy, what's going on? I'll explain everything later. I'll go. Come on. Call Mr. Kleiman. He has instructions. Fetch Meep and Jan, have them come around and see her off the streets by curfew. These pictures are important. And I know it's hard. I have to try and be sensible. I don't care. My stars mean everything to me. Jackie's on the phone. 
Shaki. Yes. And remember. Hello, Jackie. And you won't believe it. Yip's got a baby now. Did you ever think she'd become a mother? Who? Yip, Yip de Hall. Haven't you seen the new Sissy Van Maxwell book? I'm almost halfway through. It sounds divine. Come up tomorrow, we can read it together. You can be Yip, and I'll be Leo, just like the last time. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. I can't wait to show you the cover. It's so darling. I have to go now. Our guests are here. Goodbye, Jackie. Yes. Ni Panyan. What's through here? Go on now. I'll finish packing your clothes. Can. Yeah. a month or two, until the war's over. Where will we go? Will it be in town? The country? You'll know tomorrow. We'll all be together. That's the main thing. Will I be able to write to Jackie? She must never know. Take Morji with me. I'm sorry. We'll leave some food and a note for the neighbors. It's not fair. No. No.
We can't live in the past, Edith. Only the future. waiting here. Dear Jacqueline, you're the only person I can tell about what happened, but you must promise not to say a word to anyone. Don't answer any questions about where we've gone. If you do, it could be very dangerous for us. Since you've never had to disappear, I'll try to give you an idea of our life. I call our hiding place the Secret Annex. And strange as it may seem, it's actually quite cozy here. You'd be surprised to find out that we're just above Daddy's office. Up the back staircase and behind a small door. Open the door, take one giant step, and voila! Daddy and Mummy's room is right behind the staircase. Margaret and I reside next door. We've even got a bathroom. Upstairs, there's a larger room with a kitchen. The Van Pelses sleep there at night but during the day it's a big living room. We have to stay upstairs as long as the workers are still in the building. Peter Van Pals has a room off to the side, much smaller than mine. And there's an attic for storage. There are warehouses on both sides of us and neighbors all around. We have to be invisible day and night. Still see light, sweets. At first, it was only Daddy and me doing most of the work. Mummy and Margot eventually got over their shock and started to help. Shirts. It was amazing to see how many of our things Daddy had managed to sneak away. I wasn't the only one who brought my memories with me. Daddy kept his old soldier's trunk. It was hard for all of us not to think about the life we'd left behind. I miss my old room, but at least I have my movie stars to keep me company. With a little luck, we can all be happy here until we go back home. And now our annex really is secret. Mr. Kugler and Mr. Kleiman had a bookcase built in front of our little doorway. You have to be careful when you go downstairs to bend down low and try not to bump your head. 
Everything was ready by the time the Van Pelses arrived on July 13th. Here. Well done, man. Come in. Come in. I need oxygen. <laughs> Well, I told Mr. Van Pels that I'm not going anywhere without my little potty. <laughs> Peter Van Pels, dope that he has brought his cat, even though Daddy told him not to. Mrs. Van Pels asked me to love Peter like a brother, but that's impossible. Mummy says he's shy, but I think he's rather boring. Now we're to have another guest. The other day, Daddy announced we have an opportunity to save one of our acquaintances. Mr. Pfeffer has asked me for about a hiding place. Now, we know this will only add to your worries, so the final decision rests with you. It's just as dangerous for seven as it is for eight. So we're agreed. From what we can tell, Mr. Pfeffer is quite congenial. For a dentist, anyway. That's all I had better write for now. I'm sure we'll see each other again, Jacqueline, but probably not before the war's over. Until then, a little kiss from your best friend, Anne. Good morning, Mip. Here you are. Some cigarettes, if you don't mind me. And some peppermint tea. I've been having the most frightful dizzy spells lately. Things are harder and harder to come by. Whatever you can do will be fine for all of us. So, Mip, what's the news? Have you seen Jackie? I have a letter for her, but Daddy won't let me give it to you. When I finish with the shopping, we'll have our talk. And what of our friend, Mr. Pfeffer? He can't come tomorrow. He has patience. <laughs> <laughs> idea. What on earth? Tomorrow is Friday. Tell Mr. Pfeffer we will expect him Monday. That'll give him time to settle his affairs, but not a day later. I'll see to it. Meep, you remember one of our salesmen, Mr. Winter? Mm -hmm. this key? May I take your coat? How are sales in Everson? Oh, what? Bad. Mm -hmm. Everson, very bad. I hear the reports. You're in Switzerland. No, no, that was only a story. Hello, Mr. Frank. Mrs. Frank. Well, Pfeffer. Well, here oh. it is, Mr. Pfeffer. Nice to meet you. Don't worry. It's only like this when the workers downstairs are out to lunch. For the rest of the day, it's quiet. You'll have to learn the rules, of course. There are scads of rules. Mr. Pfeffer appreciates the value of discipline. Their idleness is our enemy. Our motto? Work and hope. <laughs> Listen to the Prussian officer. <laughs> Breakfast is at 9 a.m., except on Sundays and holidays when it's 11.30. Lunch is from 1.15 to 1.45, and then we expect visitors. Visitors? Our helpers, of course. Here. Thank you. Dinner after the nightly news broadcasts, and lights out promptly at 10. Parlez-vous français, Monsieur Pfeffer? Oui, 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 je parle un peu. <laughs> Comment ça va, madame? What does that mean? My poor Charlotte. She thinks I've been spirited away to the country. Who would ever believe that I'm right here in the center of Amsterdam? <laughs> would you like some more vegetables, oh. Mr. Pfeffer? Thank you. 
I think we're all very fortunate here. What a ridiculous thing to say. I don't think it's ridiculous at all. It's a wonder I don't cry all the time thinking about my friends. She's been taking her valerian drops. Be quiet. Putty, you're spoiling my digestion. Children know nothing of what goes on in the world. Here, here. Where's my pillow? What have you done with it this time? I ate it. How am I supposed to know where it is? You keep losing everything. Here. Your predictions never come true. When have I ever been wrong? When have you ever been right? I think it's a bit odd. Anna there with Mr. Pepper. He's so old. Answer the child. You won't mind. <sighs> we used to have such fun before. Before we were married, you mean? Do you always take so long? Only as long as I need to. I'd have to have a word with your father. <laughs> Don't touch me! <laughs> Listen to them. Every night, the same racket. It would have been different with the Goslers. With two children and a baby on the way. We've been over this, Edith. If the baby had cried, what then? It would have given us all away. This is no place for a woman as pregnant as she was. At least I could have taken care of her. I still can't believe it. Mother and baby both dead. Mother, don't. It would have been different if... if I had been there to help. You don't know that, Edith. That's just it, Otto. I will never know. You have to try not to think of things outside these walls. It's hard, I know. But we can't be responsible for everyone, just for ourselves. You mustn't do that. I can't help it. I like watching people. Sometimes I make up stories for them, imagining what their lives are like, what ours would be like if...
Margaret, don't I look different to you? Different? Anne, have you... I wanted it to be my own sweet little secret for a while. I've only told Beth. She fetched some things from the chemist for me. I'm happy for you, really. If only people would just stop treating me like a child. Are you busy after school? Do you think they have Jewish schools in Switzerland? Of course they do. But there aren't any Germans to force you to go there. I still can't believe she left her shoes behind. She was so proud of them, remember? You really saw them right on the floor. Like she's just kicked them off. Did you see the diary? It was gone. <laughs> but we looked. Sorry, my, my wife. They took her away last night. He sent you this. I've seen Fritz. Can't you even tell me where he is? I don't know. You see that he gets this? Of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're so kind. Tell him I love him. And that I'll wait. I don't even know what he's saying. This is not the end. It is possibly the beginning of the end, and it is certainly the end of the beginning. Now, do you know what that means, Mr. Frank? <laughs> if you ask me, the British should spend more time bombing Germany, less time drinking tea. Oh, shut up already. Fix it. Every time you try to fix something, it only gets worse. The Americans, Otto, why don't they come? Why do they take so long? They've got their hands full fighting the Japanese. You mustn't despair, Edith. The invasion will come. They'll be here soon. Yes, but will we? Daddy, will you please ask Mr. Pfeffer why he thinks it's so unreasonable of me to insist upon me being able to use my own desk? I have important work to do. Work, you understand? And besides, there are other places you can go. This writing of yours, you could do it in the attic, perhaps. It's only a diary, after all. A childish pastime. Childish? Now, now, you needn't argue. What I propose is this. Uh, Anne should have the desk, say, twice a week from Four in the afternoon until 5.30, and Mr. Pfeffer may use it the rest of the time. But, Pim... Oh, we agreed. We all have to make small sacrifices, Anne. You mean me. I have to make the sacrifices, and it isn't small. I'm not a little girl anymore. Mr. Pfeffer has a right to the desk. And don't I have rights? 
I work just as hard as anybody else here. I just don't want that man pouring through my private thoughts. That's easily remedied, I should think. I have it. Here. This will keep your diary safe from prying eyes. Thank you, Daddy. My little woman. Pardon me? Oh. Never let it be said that Anne Frank failed in her so-called studies on my account. This is my partner, Mr. Kleiman. Oh, Our indispensable meep. Hello. And Beb. Nice to meet you. This is Mr. Vermaren. He'll be taking over as foreman. At least until Beb's father feels well enough to return. Well, I'm not much for talk. But if it's a hard worker you're looking for, I'm your man. Fine. Um, show Mr. Vermar in the storeroom, please, Beb. I'll do it. <laughs> Our salesmen give their orders to Beb once a week. Everything you need to fill your orders is right here. We have two kinds of Pecticon products, spices and jams. Well, this would fetch a pretty penny on the black market. I wouldn't know about that. Uh, your office is going to be in here. What's this blue paint for? Oh. That's to keep the spices out of the light. Hmm? What does Meep think? She doesn't trust him. She thinks he's a thief. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's very protective. Shining Peas is so boring. I can never be a housewife. It's like being in prison. It's only temporary. Your father would be back soon enough. I'm sure of it. No. They say it's cancer. So much suffering in the world. Is that all you can say, Mother? It will only make matters worse. Honestly, I don't know how you could be so thick sometimes. Anne, that's no way to talk to your mother. Don't listen to them, Beth. You know what I do when things get difficult? I go upstairs. There's a window in the attic where you can see the old chestnut tree in the yard. There's the most wonderful branches. And when they're in full bloom, it's beautiful. When I look out, I feel better somehow. It makes me wonder. If God is a lot closer than most people think. Did you read that in one of your books? Such a font of knowledge you've become. I suppose I'm just hopeless. Excuse me.
Don't you think you should apologize to your mother? She could be such a trial sometimes. You're quite a trial yourself. So people keep reminding me. It's only natural for a girl, and I mean a young woman of your age. To... Stop! I don't want to hear that I'm like all other girls. I'm not. I'm me. And Frank. And your mother's your staunchest defender. I've heard her with Mrs. Van Pals. She's your friend. I don't want her to be a friend. I need her to be a mother. Someone I can look up to. To set an example. Your mother's a kind, generous woman. She's a dutiful wife. She's borne a great deal without complaint. You always take her side. But I've seen the way you kiss her. You kiss her the same way you kiss me and Margot. I think even you're not in love with her. Never say that. You wouldn't want me to take away your diary, would you? Daddy. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I just, I can't help the way I feel. Mummy and I, we're so different. We're like night and day. She doesn't understand anything about me. Have you tried to understand her? Fallen asleep. How long have you been watching me? Mm. I've just come up. Honest. Um, beans in the storeroom. Everyone's gone now, so it's safe to bring them up. What do you think you're doing? What's in that building back there? It does not belong to us. Is that right? You are supposed to be at lunch. Get out. Go.
Ja, es gibt Juden hier. Raus, Juden! Ihr habt fünf Minuten Zeit! Kugel's records are getting sloppy. The curtains in the front office. They're open again. They're always open on weekends, Mr. Pfeffer. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. <laughs> and tell me, how am I to collect any papers? Surely no one will see. That's how it starts. No one will see. No one will hear. No one will pay any attention. Then what? Hello, Peter. Hi. Did you bring the bread? I give me the keys. I'll do it myself. And get rid of that cat. You look ridiculous, like you're wearing one of your mother's precious furs. Don't cough. I think it's beastly the way he treats you. I oh, don't mind him. He gets like that when he hasn't had his cigarettes. <laughs> Your eyes sparkle. They're pretty eyes. No, I'm not pretty. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Well, you'll just have to believe me then. wondering where that had got to. Thank you. So it's your wallet then, is it? I've just told you. You were in the warehouse last night? That's right. 
Why? I don't have to explain myself to you. Didn't a certain Mr. Frank work here in the office at one time? A Jew? What's that got to do with anything? What happened to him? He disappeared. Disappeared? That's right. Now, if you'll excuse me. If it's a reward you're looking for, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh, I got my reward all right. Somebody living in that building behind us. I know it. My wife cleans the offices. If there were people hiding, she'd know it. She thought she saw something once, but he turned out to be a salesman. Everybody's hiding somebody these days. What bothers me is that uh, they may be Jews. Could be bad for all of us. You think Kugler's in on it? Kugler. <laughs> Kugler's a liar. I know that already. That whole bunch in the office is always sneaking around. Kleiman says he has to go to the storeroom, and the secretary is always checking records, and the other one, that meep. Something about her I don't like. She's shifty, that one. What can you do? The firing for Marin could be dangerous. If he suspects something, there is a chance he could go to the Gestapo. The reward for Jews has gone up to 25 guilders a head. On the other hand, if the fellow's stealing, he's got something to hide as well. Yes, I think you're right. We have to be more cautious from now on, all of us. That was our last hundred guilders. What are we to do for money now? One of those fancy dresses of yours should be worth something. I'd like to see you try. Stop being a ninny. And don't speak to me that way. Whose fault is it we're in this pickle? Certainly not mine. Would you please stop arguing? You're like two magpies always bickering. And I don't see you offering to help. Please, to her. everyone. Accusations accomplish nothing. We're left to fend for ourselves while you keep all the money from the business. Don't you think my curly deserves a share of that money? Hmm? Where would you all be without his precious nose? I tell you, still making jam. See, I told you we should have taken in the Goslars. Oh, Edith, please. Is that so? Yes, it is. Oh, Mr. Pfeffer, would you mind waiting a moment? Would you please convey this to Mr. Van Pels? Tell him, um, <laughs> tell him I await a response. Oh, yes, of course. If Mrs. Frank wants her linen back, she can have all of it. I've never really cared for it. To be honest, I've always found it rather shabby, haven't you? And from now on, they can use their own china. See how they like that. Thank you, Mr. Pfeffer. Very well. Be sure to put that in the letter. All right. It'll teach them to put on airs. Mr. Pfeffer, would you please ask Mr. Van Pels to pass the salt? <sighs> oh. 
At least it was one of theirs this time. Peter, get up here. It's all right. You shouldn't get into trouble on my account. What do you think you're doing? Sit down. Look at yourselves. You're supposed to know better. How do you think it makes us feel? Me, Peter, and Margot, to see you behaving this way. A fine example you're setting. She's right, you know. There's absolutely no place for pettiness. Give me your plate. Would you like soup or porridge? Porridge, please. Mr. Pfeffer, would you be so kind as to pass this porridge <laughs> to Mr. Van Peltz? <laughs> Mr. Frank, Mr. Van Peltz. Have some vegetables, Margot. Ah, here's a joke for you, Anne. What has four legs and flies? Hmm? Tell me. Hmm? <laughs> a horse. <laughs> What do you mean, a horse? A horse. A horse can't fly. A horse that's f with the flies at the tail. Hmm? Oh, don't be disgusting. <laughs> More putty. I don't get it. What do you mean? A horse with the flies at the tail. Peter! It was announced from the broadcasting station at Cologne this evening that the whole of Western Germany is to be blacked out until further notice. Night raids have already caused severe damage, and President Roosevelt has repeated his request that Allied planes refrain from bombing civilians and unfortified towns. You should drink this. It's such a bother having the flu. I'm afraid to cough for fear someone might hear. I like the bells. I like to hear that there is life waiting for us. Margo, what do you miss most about outside? I don't know. So many things. I long for everything. I've decided something. What? <laughs> 